Hey there, welcome to this tutorial where I'll be taking you through the creation of a kind of brick texture you can use in, in your scenes for painting and concepting and all that good stuff. So basically we're going to go to File New and create a new document. It doesn't have to be huge. Uh, go with 1080 by 1080, see what that looks like. So it's like nice and squared, which is kind of best when you're creating brushed or like you know like a brush kind of texture to find my stuff here right so basically what I'm going to create in is you know these this type of brush here you know you can see that I've got like clouds I've got a uh, random kind of textures more clouds trying to find you see this this is like a, a good kind of dirt noise type brush but what I want to create in this video is something like this but it, it kind of just wax out a kind of brick texture but um, what I'm going to try and attempt to do here is create our own so what we've what we're going to do is use the foreground picker, which I have set to um, a hockey, which I press A, uh, the color picker, but I, it's this here. Use left click, one of these little boxes. Yeah, I have it set to A, so I kind of forgot how you get it up normally. But I'm going to use my textured brush to kind of get a, a noise going on. This is going to be, I guess, just the, the base of the brick, I suppose. Because what we want is our different elements on different um, different layers. So oh, I'll just set this to base. And of course bricks are comprised, you know when you see a wall, a brick wall, it's comprised of the actual brick itself and the cement type mortar thing that they you see, you know, in the gaps. You know, it's usually like a lighter colour. Now with our hard round brush selected, what we can do is turn the this option off, which is your pressure sensitivity. So this will allow us to just draw you know, solid kind of lines. Actually, it doesn't really matter what color we make this, but let's just make it lighter. Let's full screen that by double clicking that bar. Get him out of the way. Now, if you hold shift while you're drawn across the, the canvas, it'll automatically uh, create a, a straight line for you. Now what you can do is you could do these manually but what you press actually you can right click on the layer duplicate duplicate the layer click V so it takes you into like move kind of mode and hold shift and just drag it down and you just kind of repeat that I, I think I've changed my shortcut hockey for duplicate layer because I press Control D, but I think by default it's Control Shift D. But I'm not sure on that. You'll have to double check. But and also duplicate your layer. Just right-click the layer, duplicate layer. Then yeah, press V to go into you know your move kind of tool, which is this like arrow, black arrow thingy. Then what you can do is uh, merge these down by left clicking on this top layer here. Go to the kind of last layer you want in your selection, hold shift then left mouse click and it selects them all for you. What we're going to do is hold control E and that will merge all of those layers down. Then I press control D to duplicate the layer but you'll have to find shortcut hotkeys. That was weird. <laughs> I'm not 
sure what happened there, this kind of spazzed out on me. Right. Mm, that looks alright. And of course I'm going to go back in and make this a bit more un, you know, irregular. Create a new layer. Of course we need our verticals. use the same tactic just by duplicating bringing these across right. so it's this layer here hold shift control E and now our vertical lines are all on one layer and we just alternate like so. I'll merge them two down so we're doing two at a time. So you just continue to kind of like merge them down. just moves them into place. Now I pressed E there to bring in my um, set it into a race mode. Right, so I'll just come off like the uh, full screen there. Oh, you can press tab to hide and unhide your UI around your canvas. But yeah, I think the erase tool is just here on your toolbar. And I'm pretty sure he is the default um, hockey. I hope so. Because <laughs> uh, I change a lot of the uh, hockeys because the defaults aren't exactly the most comfortable, I don't think. Right. Just full screen this by double clicking this bar. And of course, we need to do this one last time, so I'm I could just duplicate and move it all down, but what I can do is use my marquee tool by pressing M. Yeah, of course, I need to spin set to circular marquee. So, yeah, it's just a second top tab up here on this bar, then set it to rectangular. There we go. And just press Control C to copy that. Now clear your mask. I press Control Shift D, but I think originally I had to Control D. I may have swapped those around for whatever reason. But yeah, I think you can actually, you know, if I create that again. I had to deselect. So if you create a mask, or oh, marquee mask, all you do is right click in it and press deselect. So if your hockey is not the same as mine, that's how you deselect that. So I've already copied <coughs> that selection, so I'll press Ctrl V and I'll just paste it. Now I've got a bit of that top bit in there, but doesn't really matter. Cause this doesn't quite fit. <laughs> Typical. And this stretches out. Not really bothered about accuracy at this point in time. So I think I can just uh, merge all of those down. And what we have now is it's looking very basic, but we'll, uh, we'll add more detail into this. In the next part, I hope this has been uh, useful to you. I'll uh, hopefully get the next part up soon. We'll go into more detail 
use some like nice text brushes and stuff so I'll see you then thanks for watching